you. This is Anne Marie, and I am with the Bingham Creek Library. We're glad to have you joining us. I'm going to start off by talking about a few of the supplies that we're using for this project. I'm using just an eight by 10 canvas board. So it's just kind of a board that has been coated by canvas and is ready and prepared already to be painted on. You can get use it most craft supply or art stores. So I'm using a very inexpensive, uh, just kind of cheap one inch brush. We won't be using this a lot, but it is a great and helpful tool to put down a lot of paint really fast. Uh, we also have two other smaller brushes. And if I hold this up against the one inch brush, you can see how small they really are. Uh, this one's about a third of an inch wide or so roughly. And it's a flat brush, as you can see right here. Uh, this is our, our uh, more detailed brush, and it's a round brush with a very sharp point you can see right there. At the base, it's maybe an eighth of an inch wide. You don't need to have an exact match on any of these dimensions, but just to let you know what I'm using, uh, that's helpful. Especially when you comes to the detail work, it's nice to have something that comes to a very sharp point like this does. Got my water, of course, already set aside. Got plenty of paper towels on hand. I'm gonna be using a lot of these. I also have some rubber bands as well as Q-tips. We're gonna be using these to make the cherry blossoms. I'll go into that more later once we get to that point. Then of course, I have our paints here. These are acrylic paints and uh, as a result, they are wonderful to work with. They're water soluble. A lot of the uh, acrylic paints you'll find are non-toxic. However, the flip side of this is usually once they draw, dry into clothing or onto certain surfaces, they can stain and you're not going to get those out. So always a great idea to make sure that you're wearing something that you don't mind, a little bit older, could get spilled on. And if you don't notice until after the paint's dried, it's not going to be a, a tragedy if you have had that um, damage. So here we've got, of course, just a regular green, uh, grass green, yellow, black, and blue. And then over here out of, you can see a little bit more up in the corner, I have my red and my white. So these are the colors that we're gonna be using and you can mix just about any color you want based off of these here. And so we're pretty much ready to get started. It's also helpful to sometimes to have some additional plates on hand, like paper plates or plastic plates on hand if you think that you're gonna need more palette space than you have for your, your paints. So we are gonna start first with our background sky. We're gonna just do a nice blue sky that will be lovely and just give us a background to work on too. So I'm taking my palette right here. And I'm also gonna use this larger brush because we're gonna be putting down paint for most of the, the canvas board I have here. I'm gonna grab, come up here to my white, grab just a little bit of white, you can see. And then I'm gonna just start pulling from the edge and pull a little bit of this blue out. Now you can make it as dark or as light as you want. That's your own personal choice. If you want to add a little bit of red to give it kind of a purpley tinge, you're welcome to do that. I'm just grabbing a little bit more of that white there. I'm gonna, cause I want a nice pale blue sky is what I'm looking for, for, for mine. It'll give us a little bit more contrast with those cherry blossoms so that they can stand out a little bit more. And you can blend this as much as you want, or if you like a little bit of different tones in your, in your sky, you can mix it less so that it's not quite as streaky. And then I'm just gonna kind of put this down really, and I'm just blending it out as far as I can so that it's pretty light. I don't want to have like super heavy paint because the heavier your paint is when you put on your first layers, the longer you're gonna to have to wait to do those other layers. I'm also just going up to the edge here. Um, I have a, 
like a vinyl tablecloth that I got super cheap at some store. Um, you can get it at a lot of, a lot of stores sell cheap plastic or vinyl tablecloths. Um, it's great to put one of those down if you have a nice table or desk that you're working on and you don't want to get paint on it afterwards because if, if it won't come off, it doesn't matter. You're, you've used just a very inexpensive tablecloth. A lot of those plastic though and um, vinyl tablecloths, sometimes you can just wipe them off even after it's dried because things just don't really stick very well. You can see, I, like I told you, this is not a very expensive brush. It's pretty inexpensive. One of those just cheaper ones that you can find. And I'm just kind of losing some bristles in my light blue sky. So I'm kind of going through and just picking those bristles out. Now, if you don't have a lot, you can always add a little bit of water to like kind of spread out your paint a little bit more. Of course, I have more over here, but I'm getting towards the, the end of where I want. And so I don't want to get too much more paint on here because I want it to dry nice and fast. And I'm just going to the edges here so that it doesn't leave me with a strange white line. You can kind of tap the edge of your brush if you like where there's paint along the edge or even just kind of run it along the side. But if you do that, you want to kind of maybe come back and brush so that your brush strokes are maybe running in the same direction. It can sometimes um, create some interesting glare and um, not, not the, uh, an even looking surface when it dries. So we've got that all kind of painted on our nice light blue. And I'm just going to come over here and get a little bit of white and just kind of put in some kind of light fluffy clouds. And I'm just kind of tapping my brush to do that. I'm just kind of deciding whatever shape I want here. And the more I work it, you can see the lighter those clouds get. So I'm just going to put another one up here, maybe a little bit smaller. I'm going to kind of turn it the other way so that the bottom of the cloud doesn't look quite so flat. Get a little bit more white and you can always, if you feel like you've got too much on your brush, you can go a little bit to the side where there isn't paint or where there's less paint. You can kind of tap a little bit and it will take some of that off. Also, you may want to look kind of with, with these kind of the waffly weave sort of look that we've got um, with these canvas board, you know, or any kind of canvas. Um, you're going to find that sometimes uh, the paint doesn't go all the way in. So you do want to kind of look and see if there's a place that needs a little bit more attention. Uh, you can fill those in before it gets all dried up and you're out of the color of paint that you mixed up. I mean, you can always mix up more, but sometimes getting an exact match after it's dried can be a little bit more tricky because the paint color, once it dries, changes a little bit. So, and that looks kind of nice. I'm gonna do one, one more little cloud here, just kind of something a little bit brighter there. You can do as many of these as you want. You can join clouds together so that they look like they're one big cloud. Like I'm doing here with this one. And with acrylics, they frequently dry darker 
than they look when you're painting wet. So just expect that, that it's going to be a little bit darker probably than, than you think it's going to be. And that's kind of some of the exciting part of painting with acrylics. So, you know, you can keep doing this all the way through. If you want a really cloudy sky, you can go really fluffy clouds all the way through, whatever you like. I'm just gonna go through and add a few little highlights to some of our existing clouds so that they look a little bit more substantial. Once again, not using a lot of paint here, just a little bit. So that I don't have to wait too long between um, different areas for the paint to dry. You don't, once you move to a new color, it's, it's kind of a problem sometimes to work in a different color paint. If the area is still wet, it can cause some weird things to happen that are not always what you're hoping for. And if there are some areas where it feels like it's getting a little bit um, like your, your paint started to dry in some areas and your clouds are starting to look kind of sharp, you can kind of clean out your brush a little bit. And the best way to do that with these brushes that have a lot of paint that they can hold because they're bigger is to kind of just kind of gently press them into a, a paper towel like this it's going to mean you use a lot less water cleaning your brushes. And then I just rub my brush against the side of the, the cup gently. You don't want to get too rough with it or you're going to lose tons of bristles and it'll get all out bent out of shape really fast, especially if you're using a nice brush. Um, Let's get a little bit more of that paint out of here. Obviously, you're going to get some paint on your hands using this technique. Um, if you've got like a nice manicure or something that you don't want to get messed up, then just put on a pair of gloves. Um, though a lot of this will just wash right off your skin. It's just sometimes it'll get in your uh, around the edges of your nails and that can be a little bit harder to get out. So now I'm just taking a little bit of water and I'm kind of softening these clouds just a little bit. And that kind of loosens up the paint that was starting to dry around the edges of these clouds so that it blends a little bit more. And so you'll have a softer look, softer edges um, than you would have had otherwise. And if, you, if you're feeling like something's looking not quite right, you can kind of blend more all the way across. And you can go in and add more white or blue. If, you, if there's something that's not looking quite the way you want it to, that's great. But we are gonna let this sky dry is what we're gonna do. You can work on it as much or as little as you like just to get that look you're hoping for. I'm just cleaning out my brush now while this is drying um, so that I don't wind up having paint dry into it for later when I want to be able to work with this, this brush again. Because if you have, a, especially with acrylics, if you have a lot of paint in your brush and it dries all the way, it's like a, a block of plastic almost. Just not very easy to use. So now you could just sit here and wait for this to dry or go get yourself a snack or take a break or whatever. Um, but if you're in a little bit of a hurry, uh, you can use a hair dryer. So I've got a hair dryer here and I will just be turning this on and using this on a 
very low temperature. I actually have a temperature control on mine. And I'm also going to be setting it for a very low um, output of air. So I'm not going to be having it on like high and just blowing it all over the place. That's not a great idea. If you do happen to have puddles of water, you're going to want to just let it dry the old fashioned way in the air. Otherwise, you're going to be blowing things all over the place. But if it's just kind of a light amount of, of water, and it's still just kind of almost evenly across, you can easily dry with a blow dryer. So that's, and you don't want to get too close when you turn the blow dryer on. Uh, especially if you have, if you don't have temperature control or it's very high output of air, of air, you want to hold it further away as you start and just kind of give it some time. You can get a little bit closer if you see that it's not causing any problems, but you don't want to get super close to start out with if it's too hot or it's blowing around your paint. Like if it's, if you've got too much water on there and you didn't realize it can cause things to look a little bit funny. So here we go. I'm just going to turn on my air, uh, a hair dryer and blow dry our sky. Okay. So you can see that now that I've got my painting dry. There are a few little blotchy patches where I put down a little bit too much water and it doesn't really look like clouds. It looks like there's holes in my sky. So great thing. I still have my blue paint over here that I use to make the sky. I'm just going to take this smaller brush and I'm just going to kind of fill these in really fast. And I'm kind of brush, brushing around the edges a little here to try to make sure I'm blending it a little bit, not leaving like super strong lines here. If for some reason it is looking like I am getting a strong line, I'm going to get a very little bit of, out of water there. This is a lot smaller brush, so I'm not going to probably be lifting out a lot if I just run that along the edge and just kind of gently, especially when the undercoating is is dry. Um, and the way, one of the ways you can tell if your paint is truly dry is it gets kind of a matte color to it, a matte look to it. And so it's pretty obvious once it's, it's dry. Also, another way you can tell, you can see how I was kind of patting and touching here. That's another way you can tell um, that it's dry is it's going to feel just it's going to feel dry. You're not going to get fresh, um, you know, paint on your hands. So you'll notice that, of course, very obviously, but it also doesn't feel cool to the touch. So I'm just kind of coming through here and, and I'm not worrying too much if things don't look like they're in an exact match just yet because it's drying still. And I know I'm going to have a little bit of color change with that. So I'm just kind of trying not to get too anxious about how my sky looks just yet that I'm leaving lines or anything like that. So if I need to, I can always work on one of those clouds again and kind of clear up anything that looks like it's not, you know, really the way I want it to be. Guys are a very forgiving thing to work with. It's wonderful. You can just keep painting them until they look the way you want them to. I kind of blend that down just a little bit more because that's looking like it's leaving a bit of a line there. And I don't really want that. And I'm just kind of brushing my brush all different directions to try to get that all smoothed out. So I'm not leaving too much of a line. And now I think we're ready to come back in with a little bit. We're just going to actually put water into our brush before we even get any of this white out here. And we're just going to kind of 
touch some of these clouds up just a little bit more. You can see how the white's standing out a lot more now that the background is much more dry. It stand out a lot more because I've added more white there. So it looks like it's in front of the others. Just kind of give the bottom part of that a little bit more definition. And you'll notice I don't keep my board exactly straight and even with me. I kind of turn it around and I do different things. Put it however is comfortable for you and is going to give you the control you need. So, and down here where I'm going to work next, it's actually dry here along this blue area. So I'm going to just let the, the clouds and everything up here dry out while I work on our grass, where the ground is going to be where our tree grows out of. So I'm taking some of this green. This is a really, really bright, bright green. Um, kind of like that Crayola grass green color that you get with um, markers or, well, markers or crayons or whatever. Um, so I'm adding a little bit of yellow just to kind of make it look not quite so, um, so bright. And I'm just, and you're actually going to use a surprising amount of yellow to, to tone down that, that green. I don't want to add too much because that'll make our grass look sick, but I don't want it so bright green that it doesn't look real. And you can even grab a little bit of red, and I don't think I want quite that much, but if we mix in a little bit of red, it will kind of mute the green even more. We're going to add a little bit more green to that because I pulled out quite a bit of red and quite a bit of yellow. But that's looking like a, a nice kind of green there. I'm making sure I don't have any dried bristles in the way. And then you can see just this almost an inch, maybe an inch and a half on the bottom. I'm just going to quick Put this down, not super heavy, because um, we're going to be doing some more painting on top of this area, and we don't want to have to wait forever for it to dry, or worry that we're going to wind up lifting off layers of paint if we think it's dry and it isn't, because sometimes acrylics can be tricky that way, and you think they're dry, and... The top is dry, but the bottom layers, because there's so much paint there, isn't. So I've kind of got my initial layer down. That is still looking awfully bright green to me. I'm going to actually grab more yellow. I am. And I'm going to just come back and kind of give us some little tiny strokes upwards so that it looks more like grass and less like I just dragged a line across the bottom of our page. Here. Get a little bit more yellow in there. Ooh, that's a lot of yellow. Well, let's see. Oh, that actually looks a lot better than I thought it would. That's the other thing too, is sometimes if you're working on top of a wet paint for another color, 
you wind up blending the colors together on your board or on your canvas or whatever your work surface is. And it turns out being a different color than you expected because it's not exactly the same color as you had on your palette. Now I'm just drawing these up very lightly. I do not want super long grass, so you can. That's totally great. I kind of feel like this looks really uniform. So I'm actually gonna give us a little bit of a hill here for our tree to grow on. And you can see how that kind of flattened everything out when I, for texture there. So I'm gonna, we'll get a little bit of green in here and just kind of keep working in this area, giving it a little bit more dimension by having multiple colors working through out our grass so that it doesn't look like I just plopped the same uniform color of green down. And for right now, we're gonna actually stop working in this area and let it dry a little. I am definitely gonna be coming back in just a minute and giving it more layers but right now there's enough paint down that it's just starting to all blur together, which doesn't give us kind of that grassy feel and look. So I'm gonna actually take out my hair dryer again and dry our grass. Okay, well, and when you're using this a hair dryer to dry your, if you're using that to speed things up, you may wanna realize that sometimes it can blow stuff onto your paint. And so while it's still fairly um, just recently dried, you can usually just gently kind of rub that off with your fingers um, and get that out. Um, so yeah, this is looking pretty nice and dry. Now the, the trick is, is I still can see some places that are a little bit shiny. So I know that those are not fully dry, even though it feels warm um, from the hair dryer. Uh, so we're, I do know there are a few spots where I do have a little bit of paint that's not all the way dry yet. But for right now, we've kind of got our grass here and these areas are dry enough that I can actually come back in and do just a little bit more. And I'm just barely touching it with with the tips of my, my paintbrush. So I'm not putting down a lot of paint. I'm just getting a little bit down so that I kind of can see little tiny blades of grass. And they stand out quite, quite well for me. You may not be able to see them quite as well, but they are nice and shiny on that matte paint so I can see where I'm putting them down. And if it's not looking like there's gonna be a lot of contrast, I can go in and add some yellow, a little bit of red, but I'm just putting down little tiny bits of, of grass there. And you can turn your, your brush different ways. You can see how I'm kind of using the edge instead of using the wide part, and then I'll move it and do something different. Just kind of getting it, playing with it, moving it around so that you don't get the same brush strokes over and over again, right next to each other. That doesn't look really realistic. Your eye is gonna feel like that's very patterny for lack of a better description. Um, probably not a word, but that won't look right to your eye. It'll look fake for lack of a better description. It doesn't look the way nature is. Nature's random and we expect to see that randomness when we look at a painting. So that grass got a little bit taller than I wanted it to be right there, but I think it adds character. So we've got a little bit more definition and depth going on. You can see in my grass now. 
and we're gonna call that good. You're welcome, just like with the sky, you can work with your grass as much as you like. It's another area that's really easy to just kind of play with for as long as you feel like you need to, to get it to look the way you want. Uh, just make sure that, you know, if it's starting to get like all blobby, messy looking to stop and let it dry or dry it yourself with a hairdryer. Now, if you ever flick your brush like that and wind up with green spots, little tiny green spots in your um, blue sky, I just got some of that clean water I had in that other, and this is all dry now, very dry. So I just took a little bit of water on the edge of my paper towel, nice and clean, and just kind of patted it off. And, you know, you can do that and just lift it right up out of the area. You don't wanna do that if it's in a wet area though, um, that can cause a lot of mess to happen, just blending and blurring. And you might wind up with a big blob of water in the center of your painting, not what you're looking for. So if it happens and you happen to be in an area where it's wet, you can try using one of your like little tiny brushes and see if you can just kind of gently blend it in or lift it out with the tip of the, the brush there. Either of those options can work really, really well. So we are ready to get started on our cherry blossoms. First of all, though, I'm going to make sure I clean up my hands a little bit more so that I don't have any wet paint that can get onto our Q-tips because I don't want green cherry blossoms that would look a little bit funny. So what I'm doing is at this point, I'm getting my rubber bands and I'm just gonna grab a bunch of these Q-tip swabs. Um, I'm gonna grab, oh, I don't know, like eight or so. And what we're gonna do is you're gonna just tab them all down so that they're about the same height, which is actually a lot harder than it sounds. You can kind of get them all lined up. They want to kind of go between each other and not stick together the way you want them to. That's okay. Don't smash them too much though, or you'll have like just a big flat tops and we want those little tiny rounded things on the, the top of our, so we're just going to take this and actually I'm going to get a smaller rubber band and around the center, just wrap and wrap and wrap until you've got a nice little, and you can kind of adjust them a little bit more now that you've got the rubber band on there. If one's sticking up really high, you can kind of push it down a little bit or pull one up if it's not as high as the others, but there you go. I've got a little bunch of Q-tips. We're going to maybe grab like three and put three together. That's a lot of rubber band for just three though. We're going to, you just go around enough time so that the rubber band isn't going to be super loose because um, you don't want the your Q-tips all, there we go, coming apart. So there we go, we've got another bunch. And then we're gonna make a bigger bunch here. I don't know, like 20 or 25 or something. I'm not counting. Because that's a little bit, bit much. So you just kind of try to get them to lay a little bit flat initially so that when you bunch them up together, they're not going crosswise of each other all over the place. We're gonna grab one of these and away we go. And this one, I'm gonna have to play with a little bit more because they wanna kinda 
have a bunch that stick up in the center and others that don't want to, that want to be lower. And we don't want a big rounded hill like this because we're going to be painting with it. We want them to be kind of more level with each other. They don't have to be exactly level, but it will be a little bit easier to use um, if there's some levelness. So, but having some lower will also spread them out. So that's not a bad thing either. We're kind of looking for this irregular stamp pattern thing to do. So now we've got that together and you can continue to play with that. And if you wanted to do more groupings, you totally can, but we just have kind of a larger, medium and smaller. We're also working on a fairly small canvas here. So we don't need a huge, you know, giant bunch of Q-tips together. We're gonna just be kind of stamping these around to create our um, cherry blossoms. So uh, we, we don't need like one that's gonna be the entire tree. So now we're ready to start mixing our cherry blossom colors. So I'm gonna switch out these for right now. We will come back to those. Um, I'm going to avoid this corner of my red because it has a bunch of green in it. And I am going to just pull out a bunch of red over here. And I'm gonna need a bunch of the white too because that red is a very strong color and we do not want red cherry, cherry brown blossoms, we want pink cherry blossoms. So I'm gonna be using a lot of white. And I'm just kind of mixing these up at this point. I'm using that flat brush to do this at this point. And I've got kind of a really vibrant pink that I've got going here right now, which is perfect. We want something that's gonna be a lot brighter for this first bunch of cherry blossoms that we put down because, and we're putting these down before we put the trunk in because trees are three-dimensional. And so we're gonna have, you can see cherry blossoms all the way through to the other side behind the branches. And we wanna be able to paint some branches on top of our cherry blossoms so that it looks like a three-dimensional tree. I'm gonna actually pull just a little bit of red in here because I think that that's a little bit, I want it to be a little bit brighter than it is turning out to be. That's fine. You can just keep playing with those colors until you get it just the way you want it. This is your painting and you should be happy with the colors and what you wind up doing. So feel free to kind of do your own thing. It doesn't have to look exactly the same. That's the great thing about art. Now, I like the idea of adding, because these are actually gonna be cherry blossoms that are further back, they're gonna be in shadow. And so I'm gonna actually come over here to my blue and grab just a tiny, tiny bit of blue. Um, and I'm just going to mix that in a little bit. And wow, that was a lot more blue than I thought I'd grabbed. Um, I'm going to actually grab a lot more of that pink, but I'm going to make it look a little bit more of a purpley sort of pink so that it's more shadowy because shadows aren't usually, we, we think of shadows as black, but they aren't. Usually shadows have a lot of other colors in them that we just don't see because they're very subtle. So you can see I've got almost more of like kind of this dusty rose pink kind of thing going on now. So at this point, I'm actually going to grab this other plate here and I'm going to transfer some of this paint over here so that it's not as thick because my paint is really glommed on there. And I know I'm gonna have to do more mixing on my paint palette there. So I don't want 
the paint to be too thick because if it is, it's gonna obscure those little, little blossoms on the tips of our Q-tips. So I'm just gonna kind of like pat it in here a little bit, smear it around, get some, and you can see some of them aren't getting as much, that's okay. And we're gonna actually start up higher because it, there's more, and we're gonna kind of turn this as we go so that it's not all the same pattern again. And you can see some of these are starting to get a little bit washed out. And I'm actually finding this may not be too thick. I'm gonna just kind of gently tap it down in there. I thought it might be, but I think we're gonna be okay. But I'm mostly gonna be putting this towards the, the center of our tree. I'm not gonna to do too much too low down or too high up because we want to be able to layer that with the lighter colors that we're gonna have. And you can actually, if you want to get some of this further out, but you don't wanna have a big, huge clump, you can kind of use the sides. Oh, I'll have a few out there and a little down there instead of using the whole thing. So you can see I kind of got this little cluster I've kind of put them in a way so that it's kind of more towards the center and then kind of easing out, tapering out to the edges like I have a tree growing here. Now, we're probably ready to actually do a little bit of some lighter um, colors here. So I'm gonna flip it over to the, our clean end here. And I'm just gonna come over to where my lighter, slightly lighter pink is that doesn't have as much blue in it. And I'm going to just kind of tap a little bit on top. Not too much. And I might bring that down a little bit more. But add some brightness in here. We don't want to make it too thick because we still have other cherry blossoms to add call that good for right now is what we're going to do. Kind of nice how quick that was, wasn't it? So I'm just going to set this over here. Um, and I am now going to once again, pull out the hair dryer uh, and dry our blossoms so that I can put in our branches after this. Now you will have probably discovered uh, after having done our little cherry blossoms that there are some areas that put down a ton more paint than others. Uh, one of the ways that we can work around that next time is we can actually, we'll blot off maybe some areas that look like they have a lot more uh, paint on them so that we don't have to spend forever with our hair dryer or wait eternity for it to dry by hand. And you'll notice that, you know, if you're using too much heat, it will maybe curve your board a little bit. So you don't want to use too much because it, it can kind of warp your board. So we're coming back here and I am going to actually clean out this brush. You can see how much quicker and easier that is with a small brush. That's one of the lovely things, getting that a lot of that paint out really fast happens a lot more quickly when you don't have as much paint or brush to get it out of. Not perfect, but pretty good. So we're ready to get working on our tree, which we're gonna use quite a bit of black, but we also want a little bit of brown in there. So first we're gonna take a little bit of this red. I'm gonna come over here and switch out and I'm gonna, actually come over here on top of the green. And we are going to mix the red with the green a little bit. And a little bit of the yellow so that we're getting a little bit more of an orange, but it's kind of a gross looking orange, right? Now 
I'm going to need more of that yellow. Because it's looking more brick red than orange just right now. There we go, that's starting to look a little bit more rusty orange. We're gonna grab some of this blue now and we're gonna mix that in. When you mix complementary colors like orange and blue or purple with yellow, you frequently get a more of a brown color. Oddly enough, green and red make it more black usually. There are a few pigments where that's not going to be like a fail safe thing, but commonly that's, that's what you get when you mix those. They just react that way with each other. So that's a great way. If you don't happen to have black on hand, you can try mixing your, your red with your green. If you don't have a brown, orange and blue are a great combination. Though, like I said, purple and yellow can frequently do something similar to that. Though you aren't gonna get the exact same um, coloring or shading as you would with an orange and a blue. So I've got a pretty nice looking brown here now. I'm going to pull in some black because I want this to be kind of a blackish. I don't know. Um, I don't want it to be a straight brown is what I'm trying to say. Want it to have a little bit more depth to it because oftentimes that's more the color that you see in. your tree bark for a fairy tree. So we've got it pretty well mixed up here. I'm pretty happy with how that looks. And we're gonna actually start down in the grass here, you can see, and I'm just gonna pull up. Now I'm not gonna make this a super wide um, looking tree, like, because most cherry trees don't have super wide trunks. But I am also kind of pulling up from the edges here, giving it a little bit of a root system, pulling that down into the, the grass a little bit more, just giving it a start. Now, cherry trees can be kind of craggy. So it's okay if you have a little bit of a bump on one side or it doesn't look perfectly straight. That's actually very normal for a cherry tree. Now we're gonna give it some big branches. Well, not bigger than our trunk though, because we all know the trunk's never bigger than the, the cherry tree. So I'm just kind of pulling it out towards the edge here. I'm gonna, Put in another one that comes kind of down the center. And we're going to do one that kind of splits off here, like so. And that kind of gives us the beginnings of our branches. Now I'm painting just right on top of those blossoms to get those branches in. But at this point, I really am gonna actually want to move to a smaller brush because you can see it gets harder to control um, what your lines look like, how much paint you put down, the shape that it looks when it is actually getting put down. That all uh, is impacted a lot by the size of your brush. And we really actually need a smaller brush at this point. So I'm getting this out. This is actually a fresh one. So it's kind of like they put something in the, the bristles to kind of help it hold, it hold its shape there. So I'm just kind of gently getting that coating off by just kind of rubbing it between my fingers like that, getting some of that stuff out of there. And then I'm just gonna get it wet. 
And I'm going to come over here and just get a little bit more of this black, black brown color. And I'm going to kind of round out where these join because while a cherry tree is craggy, um, having straight angles doesn't look right to our eye and very rarely actually happen in nature. So I'm just going to come in here and maybe give us a little bit more length to this branch. I'm going to thicken up a little bit the branch right here because it got super narrow all of a sudden and then got white again, which makes your tree look kind of diseased and strange. So, and once again, the tree branches don't have to be perfectly straight. They can be kind of craggy and have little lumps and bumps on them because this is a cherry tree and they have some of those. So I'm mostly painting just with the tip of my branch. I'm filling in some spots that when I was painting, the paint didn't get laid down evenly. Now we're gonna give it some side branches. This one's going to have a little side branch that comes off and goes up like this. And I think this one's going to actually have another branch that comes right there and shoots off like that. And that's actually looking a lot wider than the branch it's coming from. So I'm going to thicken that branch a little bit more. Easy fix. We'll give this a little side branch like that. And I don't have to have it look perfectly matched all the way around if you have a few more branches in one area okay that's good trees kind of grow irregularly like we were talking before we we expect mother nature to not look all perfectly symmetrical and yeah i'm bringing up some of these these tree branch these branches and offshoots up into the sky a little bit because I'm going to want to actually make my tree a little bit more uh, big and fill more of the, the space there. So, but where you're putting tree branches, know that you're probably going to also want to put in some cherry blossoms. So probably don't want to be going up and putting them in the corners unless you have multiple trees you're putting in that might work or if you have a really big tree that's taking up your entire canvas you've done a close-up that's great too i'm going to pull this out here to those little cherry blossoms there i'm going to straighten that out a little bit because it was looking a little bit lumpy a little bit too lumpy. We're actually going to do a little offshoot here that comes down. To this area where we've got some. And this one's going to have a little jog in it there. We'll thicken that one up just a little bit and do the same here as well so that it looks 
the way our eyes expect it to, that it's wider towards the base than it is. So we've got more and I just do that. Oops. You can see I got a little bit of paint on my knuckle there as I was working through some wet paint and I've got some paint now in our sky. So I'm going to just take this flat brush and I'm actually going to make sure it's a little bit cleaner than it really is right now. It actually has more than I thought there. And then I'm just going to with, I'm just going to gently, cause the sky is all dry, but this paint is still pretty wet. So I've just kind of gotten it and I've gently rubbed at it. And now I can lift it right off using my paper towel. And now it's all gone and fixed. So I'm going to come back again. That was a really quick fix. And we're going to widen this up a little bit here. And give it one more branch coming off there. And I'm just kind of trying to make sure I have branches coming out to the general areas where I see that there are cherry blossoms so that it doesn't look like we've got cherry blossoms just magically floating in the air. So I'm probably going to actually have a little stick kind of come out like that to explain why we've got some there. But they don't all have to be connected because we may have really, really tiny branches that we just can't see. And our eyes expect that and understand that. Or maybe they're hidden by the cherry blossoms that we've painted on top. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but you do want enough bigger limbs coming out to various areas. Like you see, I've done, I did one towards the top, one off to the side, another off to the other side, and then some intermediate branches just coming off between those different areas. That's really all you need to do. And if you're feeling kind of scared about what direction they should be going, you can always go online and pull up a picture of a cherry tree and try to copy what's there. Go, oh, I'll do an angle that's like this and what like that. And that's a great way to, to do it too. So we are ready at this point to actually, this is pretty well dry because we weren't using a lot of paint. That's the wonderful thing about these smaller brushes. You don't put down nearly as much paint. We're going to grab just a little bit of white because this is nice and clean. And I'm going to just mix that with our brown so that we get a slightly lighter brown. I don't want it to be too light, but I'm going to come back in here. I'm just going to kind of do some downstrokes here and there to kind of create this idea that I, we've got some tree bark on this, this um, trunk here. We'll do some on the roots too. It doesn't have to be, and I'm just slightly lighter. So it will stand out a little bit, but not too much. So I don't really have to do a lot of blending. Um, And if it feels like it's gotten all up in the middle of your brush and it's not on the bottom, you can kind of just start at the top, pull it down, get some of that paint out of there and then get some more on the tip of your brush again. And just work on up into the tree some more. And I'm just gentle downward strokes. They don't have to be perfect. Some are long, some are short. And then I'm just kind of following the same direction as the tree limbs as I kind of get out here onto the tree. 
And you can join some of these areas where you've done strokes. You don't have to. It can be a little bit more rough in some places because sometimes bark doesn't peel all uniformly. So there may be areas that are darker or areas that are lighter. And you don't have to go super far out because we are going to start adding cherry blossoms in these areas too. So a lot of this is going to wind up covered up. But I've kind of gotten it on the main branches here. I haven't gone out onto these little twiggy areas. It's not needed really. And you'll notice um, that I did mostly the, the bark towards the high points on the the root system down here, not so much down where they join together, where they'd be a little bit more shadowed. That helps give us a little bit more three-dimensionality as well of making it look like there's kind of shadows and it's going, they're kind of more recessed there. So that's a trick you can use. And then we, now that I've got my clean brush, because you always want to clean out your brushes between uses so they doesn't dry, we are ready to actually start up again with more of our cherry blossoms again. So I'm actually going to take, once again, the flat brush out, and I am going to add more white to this, the pink that we were using before, because we want it to be a lot lighter as we get further into the sunshine. Now, if it's looking too pinky pink for you, feel free to add just a little bit of blue to tone it down a little bit, mellow out the colors. You are painting though onto a blue sky, so that's already going to change be, you know, depending on how thick or thin your paint goes on, there are places where it will show through a little bit and that will help mute the colors as well. So I am just going to take one of these smaller bundles. This is our bundle of eight, I think it is. And I'm just going to kind of get it just on the tips there. And you can see right there in the center, that's like a huge glob. I'm going to take a little bit of that off with my paper towel here so that I don't wind up with huge globs that will cause me problems. So I'm just going to kind of start and you can see I'm tapping along the, the branches that I just put in. Get a little bit more. Once again, it's wanting to kind of lob on in that one space. So I'm just taking a little bit off with like rolling up kind of a little corner of my paper towel so that I can kind of go in and wipe out that center. I'm just kind of tapping this along the edges of where I've finished those branches and over the tops of the, where we've already put in some of the already existing. It's actually not looking so bad. So I'm going to not worry about that so much. And I'm just kind of joining this together. If you've got areas that like, like down here where it seems like things are floating, we definitely want to come back and make sure we join those with more of these lighter cherry blossoms. But yeah, that's not too thick right there. And you can go right over big parts of, of the branch. It doesn't need to all show through. We can actually take these a little bit further out. Ooh. I'm gonna actually pick up some of that paint with areas I know that don't have as much. And I'm just kind of using this like a stamp really there we go oh, 
pretty. That's looking a lot more like a tree, isn't it? As we get these layers on. Now that's quite a bit more of that lighter pink paint there, but we're gonna come back and put even more lighter pink paint on top of this. So I wanna stop at this point where, so that I don't wind up not being able to see the sky behind the cherry tree, because while the blossoms do get very thick in places, there are also places where the sky still shows through. So we wanna make sure that we've got that still available to us. So we're gonna add a bunch more white to the pink that we were using. And we're just gonna make it nice and light. And we're just going to keep putting lighter and lighter coats of pink over the top. We're not going to be putting any darker pink on top. So you want to be very careful not to get too much of your, your dark pink um, covered up because it we want it to still be able to show through to create depth. And we're not going to be able to come back and easily just do this, this stamp technique um, in areas where we've done too much. It'll, it'll show and it'll look kind of funny. You can see I'm I am kind of getting a little bit more paint there. And so I'm touching very lightly where I'm putting it down. And I am actually putting it over areas sometimes where it is a little bit wet already from what we just put down. That's, that's okay. Cause it is, it isn't like super, super wet and we're not doing a lot of work in that area, but we always want to make sure we've got some cherry blossoms that are lightest out towards the very edges because they're the ones that are going to get the most sunshine. there are some areas you decide, hey, there's a large clump here that's really in the sun, it's great. Because that's how cherry trees look. They, they do have areas where there's a bunch more all together in one place. And then there's another where it's a lot more sparse. Put in some here. And you can see there's some areas where my paint, I'm just putting down just a tiny, tiny bit because most of it's dried out at that point. That just makes it look like you have tiny, tiny cherry blossoms that you're putting down, which is fun. Because some cherry blossoms are really big and some are much smaller. That's looking pretty, pretty good. I think we're gonna mix up one more round of much lighter pink, and we're gonna use our smallest bundle yet. Just to give a few accents. Just gonna barely get some on there. And we're gonna see the areas that we put. We're gonna kind of group that together. 
that we have some high points. There are other places we're not gonna put quite as much out there, but we're gonna have some accent. You can see how using these different bundles gives us different shapes each time we go through and are adding more of the cherry blossoms so it doesn't wind up looking too much the same in any one spot. That's quite a big blob there. So I'm kind of working out some extra around there to make it look like we had a lot of cherry blossoms that are just really in the sunlight right there. One big blob by itself looks a little bit funny and stands out. So working a little bit in around it, it's always kind of nice. Sometimes I'm just using one of these to create its own lone cherry blossom. Or two, if you kind of tilt it on an angle. So now that's looking pretty, pretty good. And most of them look like they're joined to something. So if you feel like you have one area where you need to draw in just the slightest bit of a branch between two pieces, you can really, really carefully grab a little bit of paint with your And you could just add the hint of a branch coming down here and just kind of join them all. And that just kind of makes it look like there's actually something holding those together. I'm gonna actually just make the same little Thing down here. But if you don't feel comfortable doing that, you don't have to. It's totally okay. And I'm just putting it where I can see sky through so that it actually, I'm not having to try to figure out, well, is that a good place to put one, you know? And I think that's plenty good. You can always do too much sometimes. So it's always great to just kind of ease back if you're not sure, take a look at it and decide if it's okay. Now, our last thing to do actually at this point is to come back to our grass because we kind of plopped that tree right down on that grass. So I'm gonna get a little bit more water here and I'm going to revive our green paint, because it hasn't been that long. It's dried a little bit, but not that much. And so I'm gonna kind of revive this a bit. Get a little bit of paint. And I'm just gonna quick draw some little tiny blades of grass up around the base of that, where the, the grass would grow right beneath where that goes into the ground.
I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Kind of put some grass blades in. Just along the sides where we could definitely see that, yeah, that that's where those that grass would grow. And if you have an area where it looks a little bit funny, you can come back with some of that brown paint that we had. This tree branch, tree root kind of stopped and didn't look a little bit odd. So I'm going to kind of extend that in there just a little bit more. Get us some more of that green. And come back and work in another area that's dry. I am not going to work where it's still wet because then I'm going to wind up with a really muddy brown green color. There we go. That only took a second. So I'm just going to mix up a little bit more of that more yellowy green there so that we get some variety in here around the tree roots. Maybe throw some in up here to give us a little bit of dimension. And there you go. There is our cherry blossom tree. You're welcome to sign it if you like at this point because we're done. Thanks so much for joining us.